what I'm here to talk with you about. And so I'm going to talk with you about the challenge of excellence, tell you up front that I don't know much of all about your business. Number one, are you up for the challenge of change? The only thing that we can be sure of, other than death and taxes, is it's going to be different tomorrow than it is today. And people say to me, I can't change. I've always done it this way. I talked the other night, Tammy, for a group of young bankers. I said to a young banker, how long have you worked for the bank? He said, ever since the day they threatened to fire me. Now, <laughs> something that has been said at this meeting today will influence the future of your career. Don't forget it and figure out how you're going to use it. All the changes that you have, mergers and acquisitions, both as agents and brokers as well as companies, things are changing as, as uh, Rick Barrera pointed out yesterday, increasingly competitive, pressure on prices, pressure on commissions. So you're in the business of redesign, as Rick pointed out yesterday. You're constantly in the business of redesigning your business to meet the needs of your customer, to cover the bases, and to be two steps, three steps ahead of the competition. Football's a game of change that that quarterback, that quarterback calls a 49 sweep in the huddle. It's a four back through the nine hole, full back right to the right. Comes up the line of scrimmage, sees the defense set against that play. Does he buck his head against a stone wall? Of course not. He uses that individual, God-given power of choice and calls it audible and automatic. He changes things at the line of scrimmage based on his own knowledge within the framework of the game plan. He reaches down, tickles the center. That's what they do. <laughs> That's uh, why they all ought to be centers. It feels so good. <laughs> he reaches down, tickles the center, and says, 48, blue, VP Excel. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You better know it's that performance project to reduce your expenses and increase revenue. But 10 of their up foot offensive football players, when they hear VP Excel, they say it's no longer a 49. That's a square out pass. And that split end, that tight end. He says, I don't block a linebacker, but I got to go down four steps, turn to the left, quarterback throws in the ball, he goes for a first down, touchdown. Why? Because he had the ability to change. You can't sink one end of a boat. I told you this stuff was deep. Guy getting it down. I can't sink one end of a boat. If the people in the back of the boat don't like what the people in front are doing, say, I got an idea, let's go up and drill a hole and sink them suckers. I got news for you, all going down. Paint the boat, repair the boat. Change the boat, but don't sink the boat. Now we call that the discipline of loyalty. And that's what you have in this room. You people who represent St. Paul in the medical liability field, you are all in the same boat, trying to improve the boat, make it faster, make it look better, and serve better as you go. That's loyalty, folks. And boy, did I learn about this loyalty in football. We had a game in Chicago. Between the Bears and the Green Bay Packers, great rivalry. I called a clip against the Bears in the fourth quarter, took the winning touchdown away. Now, clipping, if you don't know, is blocking from the rear. Blocking from the side is not a clip, but the problem is always, always the gray area from right in here. I got, that was a block right in here, and I called it a clip, took the winning touchdown away. I got torn apart on television, the papers. The next week, we're in New Orleans, sitting in a hotel room with five rolls of slow motion film. Now it's videotape, as every crew does every week, with a critique sheet from the league office. And they got a big red question mark by that play, said, check this, we don't think it's a clip. Ran the play four times, four of the guys wouldn't take a stand, but Tony Viteri, my friend, the headlines, with whom I differed occasionally, jumped up. He said, aren't you no better than that? There was no clip. Now, I was on a short fuse. I jumped up and I said, Tony, it was a clip. He said, it wasn't a clip. And we ended up toe-to-toe -to -toe and had to be pulled apart. And I've seen that many times. And I'll tell you something I have never seen. I have never seen one football official show up another one on the field. If that back judge calls some little bump pass interference, and the guy couldn't have caught the ball with a butterfly net. You don't see the field judge coming over and say, oh, my God, Bobby, how could you call that? He comes over what? Smiling, supportive, nodding his head. They're on the same team saying, Bobby, dummy. <laughs> Pick up your flag. He couldn't have caught it with a net. You talk about loyalty, problem solver, you see. Are you a problem solver? Now, we got in our society today, we got a lot of problem finders. Find something wrong with everything. You can't eat hot dogs. they got a amount of sodium gluten in them. Can't eat chicken, they got cancer. Well, the only thing you need is pizza. <laughs> Problem finders are a dime a dozen. Remember this, you would not go to a doctor who said, you've got Framasamus pepilum of the gizzard, I'll see you. You want diagnosis and treatment. That's what your customers want. 
And you have different kinds of clients, different kinds of needs that you must meet within the framework of the coverages that are provided by St. Paul. And we have the same thing. And our responsibility, the headlines of an line judge, run that line of scrimmage at football. Now, I'll ask you a simple question. How many men do you have to have in a line of scrimmage in a football game? Answer. Got seven, right. You say, why is that important? Well, if you have six, it's a foul. I had that foul against Dallas in the Super Bowl. They use a lot of those sets, and I had that in, in, in the Super Bowl against Denver, Super Bowl 12. But the question further arises, can you legally have eight men on the line? Answer, yes. Nine. Sure. Ten. Absolutely. You only have to have one guy in the backfield. But what do you see? Play after play, game after game, you see seven men on the line of scrimmage, and human beings are creatures of habit. You, me, all of us like to do it the same today as we did it yesterday, so we can be doing it the same tomorrow because the rut gets comfortable. But I'm here to tell you that the only difference between a rut and a grave is its length and its depth and how long you're in it. Everybody in here, do this. We're going to do this. I do this in the summer. I'm going to do it today. Raise your hands this way. Can you see me up here? Everybody see me? Now, take your thumb and forth, right hand. Thumb and forth, finger and forth, form it into a circle like this. Now bring it down to your chin like this. To your chin like this. Your chin is here, folks, for God's sake. <laughs> You're running a bank, for God's sake. And you don't know where your chin is. No, you're normal. You didn't do what I said. You did what I did. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely show the way. The eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is important, but example is always clear. And the best of all the preachers are the men who live their creeds. For to see the good in action is what everybody needs. I can soon learn how to do it if you let me see it done. I can watch your hands in action, though your tongue too fast may run. And the lectures you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'd rather learn my lesson by observing what you do. For I may misunderstand you in the fine advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding how you act and how you live. You've been a marvelous audience, absolutely. But here's the big one. Are we men and women of creative action? Here's where you lay it on the line. You can know that rule book in football cold. You can be in the best physical condition. But the real question comes when you ask yourself, am I willing to throw the flag for pass interference on the one-yard line with the score tied, 80,000 people looking down my throat in the World Championship game and 113 million watching on television as we had in my last Super Bowl? Willing to stand up and be counted when the going gets tough. That's the question. That's the question. Now, all of you in this room, and me included, we can walk out of here when this is over and do things the way we've always done them before. That's our right as free people. That's our right as free people. But Rudyard Kipling said it best. He said, what you do when you don't have to determines what you will be when you can no longer help it. You are good. Your growth, your profits, your service to people are wonderful. But the question, as I leave you, is the same as the question in front of the New England Patriots, the world champions of football. And that question is not, how good are you? The question is, how good can you be? Because you see, no matter how good you are, you are never, never so good that you can't be better. And you can be excellent if you care more than others think is wise. You risk more than others think is safe. You dream more than others think is practical. But most important of all, you expect more than others think is possible. I represent your customers. You serve us well. But we expect you to be even better. That's it. From good to great, good luck. God bless you and good day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.